the cardinal and gold of Southern California, the maize and blue of Michigan. Boy, this might be the uniform game of all uniform games, and you have CBS providing the backdrop. This is set to be a truly cinematic experience in Ann Arbor on Saturday. From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. The USC Trojans and Michigan Wolverines have faced off 11 times in their history, and you can probably guess where a majority of those games took place. At the Rose Bowl game in Pasadena, California, the granddaddy of them all. You know, back in my day, don't I sound a thousand there, but back in my day, the Pac-10 champion met up with the Big Ten champion at the end of the year in that very bowl game in that historic stadium. Now, these two teams are Big Ten rivals. Let's dive in to the preview. Why don't we? Now, USC has actually fared pretty well when their conference out west has changed just slightly over the years and over the decades when it changed to the Pac-8, when it changed to the Pac-10, when Arizona and Arizona State were added, when it changed to the Pac-12, when Utah and Colorado were added, USC won their first conference game of those years each and every single year. And they're looking to do it again against the maize and blue. Michigan is riding a 24-game Big Ten win streak coming into this matchup. The last time Michigan lost a Big Ten conference game was October of 2021 in East Lansing, Michigan, when Kenneth Walker ran wild. When I think about how I feel about this game now, and then how I felt about this one even a month ago in the preseason, my feelings on this matchup have completely flipped. I said in the preseason and I thought in the preseason that this could be a bad matchup for USC. You look at Michigan, right? A lot of people, including myself, were touting them as the top defensive line in all of college football. They still could be. And then you look at maybe USC's offensive line coming together. You look on the other side of the football. Of course, the defensive line was maybe the biggest question mark for the Trojans coming into the season and the offensive line for Michigan was looking to continue the standard. This is a Michigan offensive line that won two out of the last three Joe Moore awards. And this Michigan team was built on their great play in the interior up front, their ability to push teams around and certainly run the football flip city, man, because let's start first with USC's defense. Uh, I I had a good feeling that Danton Lynn was going to turn this thing around. He was going to improve it. I just think it's happened a lot quicker than I anticipated. The way specifically that defensive line played against LSU and how they were able to hold their own against one of the best offensive lines in the country really impressed me and really showed that this development, and then you also got to credit Coach Handy Eric Henderson and what he's been able to do as a position coach on that defensive line as well. It shows me that this thing is well ahead of schedule for the USC Trojans. And then you look to the other side for Michigan on offense. You look at their offensive line and you talk about the standard of Michigan offensive lines and what they're built on. This is an offensive line. Now it hasn't happened across an entire game, maybe outside of the Texas game, but there were points in games against Fresno state and against Arkansas state where this offensive line was pushed around where this offensive line was blown up. So, so much has changed from how we felt about these teams in the preseason to now, and that's why USC is the Vegas favorite on the road in this particular football game. And that's why I think I've got a feeling that USC could make a statement when all is said and done in Ann Arbor on Saturday. More on that in just a little bit. Okay, let's get to the main question and let's start first with Michigan because I think there's so many, I think there's a lot of advantages for USC in this particular game, but there is a way where Michigan can certainly hang around in this football game. Let's talk about the run game. Can Michigan run the football? Can they live up to their standard of smash that Sharon Moore has certainly put into place? Of course, the big storyline this week, Alex Orgy 
is now the quarterback of this Michigan Wolverines team. Davis Warren won this quarterback battle because he was the better passer to ensure more balance in this Michigan offense because they felt good at what they had with Kaleo Mullins and Donovan Edwards back there. Now you have a guy in Alex Orgy that is, well, let's just put it kindly and say he's unproven at the college football Big Ten type of level. Uh, And you go back to his high school days, his junior year and his senior year at Texas, he completed 52% of his passes. So I'm not sure that Alex Orgy has ever really been a big weapon in the throw game. So how does Michigan combat that? How do they get this offense going considering all of those factors? Look, I think Michigan is trying to put as many weapons as they can in the backfield. They're trying to diversify their run game, right? Instead of just ISO and power and traditional running concepts, now they're trying to get someone like Alex Orgy, who has a great amount of athleticism, who has a great amount of elusiveness back there in the backfield. They're trying to get him involved so now they can do more read stuff, that they can do more RPO stuff as well. Look, I know that Sharon Moore is going to want to come out in this game and he's going to want to run it 13 to 16 out of the first 20 plays in this particular football game. You can't do that. I know that's what everybody is saying. And I know that's what Michigan needs to do, but you can't come out and have a predictable game plan right off the bat. Danton Lynn is just too smart of a defensive coordinator. All right, if you run and run and run, and then I talked about the matchups with USC's front versus Michigan's front, USC is going to bring everybody in the box and they're going to dare you to throw the football. Because if USC comes up to the line of scrimmage against a predictable, very heavy run-based offense and they make a couple of stops early and USC, USC's on offense, All of a sudden, it could be the middle of the second quarter, and you could find yourself in a copy and paste from the Texas game. You could be looking up at the scoreboard, and it could be 14 to nothing, and you might say, well, uh, Alex, now we kind of need you to throw the football. It's too late at that point. It's too late. You need to mix in some run with the pass. You need to get Alex Orgy confident early in the passing game, I think to be successful because this is a Michigan team that is certainly not to build, be built from behind, the, the, to come back from behind, I should say. This is a Michigan team that wants to stay ahead. This is a Michigan team that wants to shorten the game. This is a Michigan team that wants to keep the football away from the USC Trojans. And if you are predictable on the offensive side of the football, it's not going to go well. Michigan's success in the run game also has to do with Michigan's success in the pass game. Will they have Colston Loveland? That's a big question. He went out with an injury in that game against Arkansas State. Tyler Morris, one of their leading wide receivers, was questionable going up into that game against the Red Wolves last week. He ended up not playing. So will these guys play? How healthy and how effective will they be could determine just how successful this pass game can be and how balanced that this Michigan offense can be as well. Like if Colston Loveland is not ready to go and like, let's not make any mistake about it. He's one of the best tight ends in college football and he is the best weapon down the field for the Michigan Wolverines. If he's not in this game, that could equal some big trouble. um, I think for the Wolverines in this particular matchup uh, as well, let's move over to the offensive side of the football for the USC Trojans. This is the first thing that's been on my head all week. You give Lincoln Riley a bye week before anybody. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's 2021 Georgia. I don't care if it's 2024 Michigan. He's going to scheme something up. He's going to be ready to play. Now, all of a sudden, This is a perfectly placed bye week for the USC Trojans. And we're going to get to it a little bit later on in this preview, but I think he's going to have Miller Moss efficient early. I think he's going to get it to his playmakers in space. Because when I look at Michigan secondary, outside of Will Johnson, I think there's a big advantage on the perimeter 
for the USC Trojans right now. Because when I've kind of watched some of these games, uh, the Fresno State game, the Arkansas State game, certainly the Texas game that Michigan has played, uh, there has been at times, and I'm not saying it has happened all the time, but at times there's been some missed tackles in space. And when you play a team that has Zachariah Branch, when you play a team that has Makai Lemon, and I could list their wide receivers from now until the sun explodes, but if you have a team with those kinds of weapons and you can't tackle them in space, talk to USC about tackling in space. They know everything about that, having lived through the Alex Grinch era the last few years. So I think USC is going to get it to their playmakers in space. Let them create because I think that there is an advantage there. Like, know where number two in Maze and Blue is. Know where Will Johnson is and just throw it to somebody else. You don't need to attack Will Johnson because you have so many other weapons across the formation that can certainly make plays against some of these other Michigan defensive backs um, as well. I'm very curious to see if Lincoln Riley implements a similar type of strategy that Steve Sarkeesian did at Texas earlier this season. You know, when you think of some of the top offensive minds in college football, these are probably two of the names that are going to pop up. Sark over at Texas and, of course, Lincoln Riley here at USC. And uh, Joel Klatt pointed this out on the Fox broadcast. You know, when you think of Michigan's defense, who kind of steers the wheel and who kind of steers the ship, for Michigan, it probably starts in the middle, right? It starts with their great defensive tackle tandem, of Kenneth Grant and Mason Graham. And he pointed out during that Texas game that when those guys were in the game, Texas had concepts, you know, going East and West. They kind of went away from them. They tired up those guys up front, knowing that maybe there wasn't the depth at defensive tackle that there had been in the past. And then when you saw those guys come out of the game, that's where Texas went up the middle. That's where Texas was able to run the football. Now, I'm very curious to see if USC is able to implement this strategy. You have to think that Lincoln Riley is flipping on. I think I bet he's watching more of that Texas tape than he is against maybe Fresno State or Arkansas State because uh, I think he maybe sh- uh, shares some brain waves on the offensive side strategies and philosophies with maybe Steve Sarkeesian and see if he can replicate some things that, that Sark did in that game that he also can take advantage of. I don't think the run game has to be ultra great for USC to have a lot of success in this game or really the rest of the season. I said it at the beginning of the season, you know, I think they need to be fine. Like look at that game against LSU, right? They were fine. They provided enough of a threat. They provided enough of a balance where LSU needed to be aware of Woody Marks and Quinton Joyner really came on um, in, in this latter game against Utah state. But Michigan, I think, needs to be aware of the run game, but we all know that the throw game is where USC is going to make their money. So will they implement something similar that Texas was able to do? I'm certainly keeping my eye out on that as well. Let's move over back to Michigan and let's talk about their defense. You know, coming into the season, all anybody was talking about with Wink Martindale is, hey, it's going to be Don Brown 2.0. They're going to be pressuring. They're going to be coming after the quarterback. Look what he did um, in the National Football League and just how many blitz packages and how many pressures that he was able to bring. But this Michigan defense right now has four sacks in three games from three players. Josiah Stewart has two sacks. Rashawn Benny has one. And Ernest Hausman has has one as well. Michigan needs to ramp up the pressure uh, in this particular game. Michigan needs to be able to get after Miller Moss. Now, I talked about the counter of that, where I think this USC offense will be efficient. They'll get rid of the football quickly, and I think that's what they need to do to try to counter what Michigan is trying to do in being able to bring pressure. But the Wolverines need to try to think of some exotic and creative stunts and pressures to be able to get to Miller Moss. Because if Miller is able to sit back there and throw the football and Lincoln Riley and this offense are able to do what they want to do, it is going to be a long day for this Michigan defense. If Michigan can't get home, if they can't get this Trojans offense off schedule, I think it could be a tough day for Michigan. But but if they can constantly get pressure, if they can win the battle at the line of scrimmage, That could certainly give them an advantage because I think the key for Michigan is you can't allow USC to get first down after first down after first down, specifically on third down. If you get the Trojans into third and seven or longer, you need to get off the field. 
because considering what Michigan has or maybe doesn't have on the offensive side of the football, you cannot keep your defense on the field for that long because if this defense stays on the field for a long time and this offense is not exactly giving them a lot of rest, the dam could break in the second half, right? We've seen that from Iowa over the years where the defense is great and they're doing their best in the first half and they're maybe keeping it close. But if their offense you know, can't move the ball and get first downs and their defense is out there the whole time, they're going to get really tired. And that's when Iowa has broken in, in the past. And maybe that's when Michigan could let up a lot of big plays down the field uh, as well in this particular football game. All right. Those are the keys. Those are some things to keep an eye on. It's prediction time. Uh, I've got USC winning this football game. I think the Trojans will be tested in different ways. I think that this is the best defensive front, certainly, that USC has taken on. So we're going to learn a lot about their offensive line. I think overall, we're going to continue to learn more about the USC Trojans in this particular football game. And can they make that statement? A win over Michigan, specifically a convincing win over Michigan, certainly, certainly puts them into that Big Ten championship picture for sure. Certainly maybe convinces some of the few doubters that remain about the USC Trojans that they can play on that type of level, that they can be certainly a college football playoff contender as well. And I'm looking and analyzing so many things about this particular football game. It was very difficult for me to keep this one less than 14 points because of maybe the inefficiencies that Michigan has on offense. And because what USC showed in that first game against LSU and how much better they are in the trenches and how much better they are on the defensive side of the football, I find a tough time where USC doesn't win. And I also have a tough time finding where USC does not cover the spread in this particular football game. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think we're going to be fighting on at the end of this one? Or do you think the maize and blue prove everybody, including me, wrong? I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your score predictions in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.